Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the Lenovo Yoga 720. This is the new generation of a computer that I liked quite a bit last year. This one actually is a little better in some ways. Uh, this is about $829 as you see it and this is a two-in-one so you can use it as a laptop or you can fold it down into display mode like so. You can operate it in tent mode if you want and you can even uh, put it into a tablet configuration also although it gets a little bulky like that. And we're going to be taking a full look at this in this review in just a second but I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure this is on loan from Lenovo so when we're done with this it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right so let's take a look at the hardware now. This one has a 13.3 inch 1080p IPS display. Uh, really decent viewing angles on it. Uh, not bad on the brightness. It is 280 nits and I guess that might fall below some other models of different brands that might be out there. It's okay for me but if you are uh, looking for a super bright screen. This one probably will not be it. I was using it next to my MacBook, which has like a 400 nit screen. It was definitely a noticeable difference, but uh, standalone, it hasn't been that big of a deal, but it is a little muted under my uh, studio lights. It weighs about 2.9 pounds or 1.3 kilograms, so not all that heavy, a lot lighter than last year's edition. Now this one is $829 as configured. It has an i5-7200U dual core processor. That is one of the new KB Lake chips. 8 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and it's in dual channel configuration. So we're going to see pretty decent graphics performance in a little bit uh, playing some games on it, even though it does not have a discrete GPU. Uh, last year's model, the 710, actually had a GPU option. Uh, this one doesn't, unfortunately, but you can actually get some graphics stuff done on here at a fairly decent rate of performance. 256 gigabyte SSD is on board as well. Battery life is coming in for me around seven hours, give or take, doing web browsing and some other uh, minor kinds of tasks with it. So if you are gaming or doing video editing, that uh, battery life, of course, will be less, but expect about seven hours of uh, normal usage on it. Uh, overall, again, I'm really quite pleased with the form factor here. It is all metal, so it has a nice feel to it. Uh, very similar in design to last year's model, but they've changed some of the ports around. So on the side here, you've got USB Type-C and, and a Thunderbolt Bolt 3 jack over here. So this one will do USB-C and Thunderbolt. Uh, this one is just USB-C. I was able to run power out of both of these as well as video. So these are both fully functional USB Type-C ports, but Thunderbolt 3 is only on this one here. You have a headphone microphone port over on this side. On the other side, you have a full-size USB 3 port as well as the power button. Uh, they took out the card reader as well as the HDMI outputs, but you can use these multi-purpose ports here to do that. You'll just have to get a compatible dongle to make it all work. Keyboard is excellent on this one, and that was the big thing that I dinged last year's model for, primarily because they were doing some wacky stuff with the shift key. I guess they had an uh, arrow key over here and the shift key over here. It wasn't so great. Uh, they've now returned to a regular shift key and just made the up and down arrow smaller, and I think this was probably the best design decision they made on this thing. It's a much better keyboard. Really comfortable to type on, actually. It doesn't look like there's a lot of travel to it, but it does actually have a good amount of travel to the keys. Uh, really nice keyboard. It's backlit. Uh, a plus on the keyboard, definitely an improvement over last year. I'm also pleased with the trackpad. It is a pretty nice and responsive trackpad. It's a click pad and it really feels pretty nice on here. And this one also feels like a pretty nice improvement over last year. And they also added a fingerprint reader to the top of the case here. So if you want to get in quickly and get back to work, you can just put your finger down on the top of the case here and uh, you are back to your desktop here very quickly. So really nice hardware overall. I have to say, I really liked last year's 710. I like this one a little better just because it's slightly smaller. Last year had a 14 inch display. Uh, this one has a 13.3. They're both 1080p, uh, but you get a little less weight on this one, so it's easier to carry around, especially if you put it into tablet mode and that kind of thing. So really a good ideal uh, college laptop, perhaps, and also great for folks that are always on the go. And as you're going to see right now, the performance on this one is also pretty good. So let's have a look and see what it can do. All right, so let's start off with some web browsing here. We're taking a look at my uh, 1080p 60 video file from my YouTube channel here. And as you can see, things seem to be playing back just fine. I'll pull up the stats for nerds. And even with a, a really high motion shot like this. We're not dropping any frames and it's able to uh, keep up quite well with what's playing off of YouTube. My only gripe with this is just the speaker placement. There are downward facing speakers. They don't sound all that great if you're uh, listening to music and that kind of thing. They're good enough. You'll get decent stereo separation, but I think you'll want to use separate speakers or plug in some headphones or something if you want to get a uh, better audio experience. But they're good enough. They're loud enough, just uh, not as good as I would like in a, a mid-range laptop. We'll also take a look here at some web browsing, just general browsing to 
to a multimedia rich site. One of my favorites here. We'll go see what NASA's up to and you can click through and see uh, just how quickly everything renders in as you're browsing the web. This supports wireless AC so it's able to get the data down pretty quickly and the i5 is really uh, chugging away quite well at uh, rendering all these pages as we click through different things here. So really good performance out of this device and I think you'll have a, a really good experience browsing the web and doing work on the web as well. And on the browser bench speedometer test we got a score of 127.9 versus uh, 86.6 on a ThinkPad 13 from Lenovo that we looked at just about a week ago. Now that uh, Lenovo ThinkPad had an i3 versus the i5 on this one but uh, this one performs a lot better not only because of that processor but also because the 8 gigabyte configuration of this computer uh, is running in dual channel mode which means it can move data back and forth from its processor a lot faster. So we're seeing uh, some benefits of its configuration here. So really good performance there. I also am still running the Octane benchmark test even though that one is being retired as we speak. Uh, we got a score there of 30,952 which is also very favorable and in line with other KB Lake processors running with the i5 designation. And for doing productivity tasks I think you'll have a good experience here as well. We've got our very involved uh, newsletter template here on screen. Everything is very snappy and very responsive so I think if you are working with Excel and Word and PowerPoint and everything you will have a, a very good experience out of this machine. Very snappy performance on it. Now I'm very impressed with the graphics performance on this computer even though it doesn't have a GPU. So we've got Minecraft running here and uh, we're sometimes seeing frame rates hovering close to 60 frames per second. So we're just under it right now and sometimes it'll dip down a little lower than that but uh, I'm not even running any optimization plugins here and I'm getting uh, really good performance out of this thing. It actually looks really nice on screen too. So this is 1080p running with the Intel graphics and they have really dramatically improved the Intel graphics on this generation of their processors more so than we've seen in prior generations, but uh, when your RAM is not in this dual channel mode, you don't see this performance, but uh, here we are. It's really working quite nicely, and I even ran Grand Theft Auto 5 on here. Let's take a look and see how that plays. So if you wanted to see how far Intel graphics have come over the last year, uh, check this out. We're running GTA 5 here at almost 30 frames per second. It hits 30 quite often. Uh, the lowest I see it go here at 720p with all the settings turned down is about uh, 25 frames per second. So it won't be as good as a gaming computer might be with a discrete separate GPU, but the Intel graphics here are definitely holding their own on a very demanding game here. So really playable, and if you're looking for something small, thin, and light uh, that's a two-in-one, this one might accomplish that for you. Last year's model did have a separate GPU as an option. They had an NVIDIA 940MX uh, that did add to the price. And I think they looked at this saying, hey, if we can get this kind of performance without having to uh, add in expensive additional components that won't deliver a huge bump in, uh, G in graphics speed, we may as well just stick with the Intel graphics and see where it goes. So really good performance here, surprisingly so, uh, without that GPU on board. And that's why if you are looking at this, I believe there is a 4 gigabyte configuration, but you definitely want to go with the 8 gigabyte, not only because you want the more memory, but uh, because they have that memory configured in this dual channel configuration, which is what makes this work at this uh, frame rate that you're seeing here. So great performance. Uh, again, not a gaming computer per se, but it can do a lot more gaming than uh, prior computers in this class could do. Now, on the 3D Mark CloudGate test, we got a score of 5,886, which is very good, especially when you consider this does not have a discrete GPU on board. So last year's 710 uh, still does a little better with that GPU, but not not much better. So it really is a, a decent performing device even without that GPU installed. And again, I'm pretty impressed with its overall performance. The thermal performance on this is also pretty good as well. I ran the 3D Mark stress test. We got a score of 98.4%, which is a passing grade. It does see some performance degradation the longer that uh, things are taxing that processor, but it shouldn't slow you down all that much. And it seems to be cooling itself off quite effectively. Now, one last thing to check out, and that is its multimedia performance playing back video. And right now we're running a Blu-ray MKV file. This was taken right off a Blu-ray disc playing back just fine. This is not a surprise. This should play it back just fine. Uh, there's no drop frames. Everything seems to be working as anticipated. There is no optical drive on this. So you'll have to get your uh, movies over to the device through uh, some kind of utility to make that happen. But once you get it there, it works fine. The only thing to note is that if you are playing some of these widescreen movies, it'll look a little off center. And that's because the lower bezel here is so large. But this is good for when you are in uh, tablet mode. So you have a place to 
rest your thumb, but uh, you will have a kind of an off-center widescreen experience when you're playing back some of these movies, so just uh, bear that in mind. It also is able to very effortlessly play back uh, some of the higher-end video formats like the HEVC 10-bit file I have here that's 4K and running at 140 megabits per second. So right now it's playing at 1080p because uh, that's all we have for a display here, so it's downscaling that video from 4K to 1080, but uh, we're not seeing any drop frames. It starts up almost immediately, and that is one of the features of the new KB Lake chips is that they're optimized for this kind of video playback. So if you have this thing uh, hooked up to an external 4K display, you should have decent performance there. You can run it right out of that uh, Thunderbolt port there to a dock or something and get uh, really decent desktop performance out of this thing as well, actually. So all in, uh, a really decent little computer here for the price, especially at uh, $829. The Intel chips have improved the graphics performance enough that you can get some uh, light to moderate gaming done on this thing now at a fairly reasonable frame rate, at least in something as uh, advanced as Grand Theft Auto V is. So uh, decent gaming performance, really good productivity performance. The keyboard is much improved, primarily because they put that shift key in a better spot, but also just the comfort on the keyboard feels better, uh, as does the trackpad. So this is a really uh, nice machine from Lenovo here. And if you're looking for something like this that's portable, lightweight, yet uh, powerful enough to do most of your productivity work and some gaming on the side, I think this is a very good choice. And I'm quite pleased with this one as I was with last year's model. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters Mark Bollinger, Brian Miller, Mr. Morse, and Cody Falk. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.